Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of my favourite people and some of the country, and in fact the world's biggest stars, and we've got one for you today. Ronan Keating is a man who can do the business, and he's got a brand new album out called Time of My Life, and he joins us in the studio now. How are you doing, Ronan? Hey, Alex, how's it going? Now, how long have you been doing this? Oh, um, 23 years. 23 years. I've been yeah. doing this 20 years, and you've never spoken to me before. What is it about me you don't like? <laughs> We've just never been in the same room at the same time, Alex. I keep missing you in the corridors. That's it. I've been watching you from afar for many, many years, and it seems to me you're the business. You can do it. I saw you live in once last year, and oh, it God. seems to me if you can turn up and do it eight times a week the way you did, you're a pro. Congratulations. Your voice is just superb. Oh, thanks very much. I mean, that was a real it was it was a graft uh, to do that eight shows a week I loved it and coming away from it it's one of the most rewarding uh, creative processes I've ever had you know it was a really truly brilliant experience you try and do different things you know you try and make it interesting for for the cast and for yourself and and uh, and, and for the audience all the time um, trying new things with it but really I mean it's the thing you're never anywhere else in your headspace other than the show when you're engaged in those like for me it was three and a half months you know, actually four months with, re- with rehearsals um, so it consumed me it totally consumed me I, you know you have no social life you I mean I don't I didn't go out at night I, I went home every night uh, seven days a week I was you know I had Sunday off but you're just you're totally living the show you know and, and so I really admire you know people that do that for a long amount of time some actors go in there for, for a year maybe longer and it's that just blows my mind yeah, I don't know how they do it. Um, yeah. It seems to me it's changed you as an artist forever. I listened to this new album in mm. the car yesterday. I had a long drive. Time of My Life um, is a story album, isn't it? I mean, it's you yeah. acting each song. It seems like you've changed. Yeah, I have. I, I definitely have. I'm, you know, look, I'm not a child anymore, even though, you you know, in your head, you never get past a certain age. And I think I'm still 19 or 20, you know, but I'm 39 years of age now. And, you know, my eldest son is 17 and, and, and you know, life has moved on and, and things have changed a lot. And I'm very, you know, honest. I'm, I'm you know, I'm honest to myself about, you know, who I am and where I am. And I'm not trying to, you know, fool myself into, you know, st- different different things. I'm, you know, I'm really excited to be where I am in my career, to have this opportunity to write these songs, to be able to sing them like I can and to get out and do it and, and you know, turn up at 7 a.m. and do Lorraine and do it live or, you know, turn up at, you know, a festival with my guitar and just do what I do. And, and, and that's, you know, that's an exciting prospect for me and, and, and acceptance. When I saw you last night on the London Palladium or on the One Show, it seems like you're a guaranteed act that can do it. That must be thrilling for you that you started out in a boy band as a pop star and now you're a credible artist. I guess that's all you ever wanted. Yeah, I think credibility is a word I never really would, you know, use. I'm I'm not, I was, I've never, I guess at a younger age I realised that, that, you know, bands like, you know, Radiohead and Blur and, and, and Oasis, they were credible. Whereas I came from a boy band and we, as much as we battled with wanting to be credible, we never were and we never could be and that's fine. For me, it's, I guess after 20 odd years, respect is something nice. You know, respect is what you crave, not credibility. Credibility is for, you know, people who, who sit and write, you know, sonnets. For me, it's it's not. Look, you know, I, I, I sing for a living. It's very, very easy in that respect. I'm lucky to be able to do it and get away with it. And, and I'm really, really honoured that I'm still here 23 years later. Seems to me that to have longevity in any career, you have to be distinctive and have a gimmick. And your voice is very different. Is that affectation, and I mean that as a compliment, did that come naturally? Or is that sort of growl you've got, that tone, that wonderful richness, something that you've really worked on? No, I think the, the kind of that growl, that sound that, you know, sometimes people mimic, which, you know, is funny, is... Uh, um, it, that, was, that was me being unsure about my voice. That was me... Uh, trying to to just sound like I thought I was supposed to sound like I had no idea. We didn't have any guidance. I was sixteen. We didn't have any vocal coaches. Nothing. I just did it, and that that's what stuck. But actually, being in once kind of took me away from that. Funny enough, and and I sang in my Irish accent in once, which is something I never really did uh, beforehand, and that kind of taught me a lot about my voice and and you know vocal ability and so on. And that that 
definitely changed my approach to how I put the vocals down for this album. And and I'm far more aware of, of this will sound really weird, but where my voice is in my mouth. Um, because, you know, it can, for some singers, it can sit in their throat, it can sit in, you know, in different, in your head, in different places. And, you know, getting vocal coaching on once was a, was a real eye opener for me. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, that's, that's really helped. Is there more of a pressure just sitting there with you and a guitar than with the boys? Because at least they can be slightly responsible if it goes wrong. Yeah, I think the thing about Boys On is we were irresponsible, <laughs> not responsible, you know. And and in that irresponsibility, you know, you can kind of get away with anything. And that's not necessarily the best thing, but you can. I mean, you, you, you know, we were, if something went wrong, it looked like it was supposed to go wrong. Whereas when you're in my shoes as a solo artist, when something goes wrong, it looks like it goes wrong. So there's far more, it's far more difficult as a solo artist. And, and I really enjoy that, uh, that responsibility. But it is, it, is, it is a stress. It keeps you on your toes. And that's really what it should feel like, I think. Um, so going out with my guitar on this tour is, is a very exciting prospect for me. Uh, I've really enjoyed the promo on this album and getting on TV and singing. And, and, you know, as much as we can, we've been asking to do it live, live, rather than singing along to a backing track. Uh, and and it's just, it just feels right. Uh, it feels organic. And uh, I'm looking forward to that on the tour. I love that. The new album is out now. Breathe is a sensational track. Landslide's also beautiful. Thank you. Uh, Shine Like Gold, and of course your final track, Falling Slowly, is yeah. one of the greatest songs ever from musical theatre, isn't it? It's a I really agree. great song. Yeah, totally. I mean, it won an Oscar for Best Song in a Movie, and rightly so. It's a stunner, and I'm honoured to have it on my album. Ronan Keating, Time of My Life is uh, out now and you're going on tour later in the year. Um, let's talk about you because you are Mr. Delicious. I was talking to the girls today in the office and they're so thrilled to think that you're just via a phone moments away. Is it great being attractive? Because I'm such an ugly man. Oh, no, no, man. You're as beautiful as you want to be. I don't... Uh... I don't think about myself as anything other than who I, you know, just the guy I wake up in the mirror and I look older every day and, uh, you know, I I think, oh my God, I've put on a few pounds this morning or whatever it may be, you know, you, everybody's critical of themselves and I'm critical of myself very much so. I wish I had a personal trainer at the moment. I wish I was training harder. I wish I was in better shape. And because of the world we live in, social media, etc., we see beautiful people every day in our faces. And it's intimidating and, it, and, you know, it's not real life. I mean, it's a snippet of something and it's very tough to deal with that. And, you know, 23 years in doing what I do and it's, it's a really, it's a really interesting, you know, thing to, to be able to stand back and go, you know what, mate, just be happy with who you are and how you look. And, you know, I think that's the way I kind of, that's the way I see it. How much work's going into it? I know you haven't got a personal trainer, but you don't look like you by sitting eating chips all day, do you? Well, I do love me chips. I do. I, I actually <laughs> miss, you know, I look, I, I do try uh, look after myself, but I have to say I love me food. I love a glass of wine. It's my thing. I, you know, I've never been outrageous in, my, in, in you know, my party life and, and, and my diet and all of that, but I do enjoy that and, and I've got to watch it. I, you know, people say when you get to your 40s, it, your metabolism slows down. I'm starting to feel it. So you've got to work that little bit harder um, to, to stay lean. And, and uh, you know, I've got, I've got my routine and what I do and it, at the moment it seems to be working. I don't know how long, how much longer. I want to talk about Stephen Gately. I got to talk to him a few times and he was such a remarkable entertainer and performer and I lost yeah. a mate to a brain tumor we're about the same age right. you never really get over do you the no. fact that a friend leaves you it's so shocking and it's so sad and of course it leaves a gap in your life yeah well it's funny I was on TV this morning uh, talking about boys Zone, and up pops a picture on the screen of Theo and myself together and you know people just take it for granted they'll be just throw that picture up but you don't, you know, you don't realise how that actually can affect somebody, you know. And it took the wind out of me. I didn't expect to see it and it just popped up. And there, and I th still think Steo's alive. I still have his phone number in my phone. I, you know, those things, it's just, it's hard to fathom that someone so alive is gone. Um, it just blows my mind. I still, none of us have come to terms with it. We miss him every day. And, and, and you know, thank God we have his voice in song, you know, that it'll be there forever. 
from what a travesty seeing him live i think i saw him in joseph a couple of times and yeah. i mean he could do the business he was a born star especially for musical theater he was great that was the thing i mean steel was always the one to do west end i never thought i'd do it and you know went to see him in shows and he was always amazing and he he used he used to walk the corridors backstage singing musical songs the top of his lungs i mean he just lived it and loved it and and you know it was always a treat and 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 a pleasure to hear that but yeah, it's 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 just hard to believe that that bright shining star is is no longer there, you know. And I know there's talk of uh, Boyzone coming back. Mm. Firstly, is that true? And secondly, will you be paying homage to him and somehow bring him into the show? Find a way of including him. Yeah, I think. Uh, well, 2018 is is 25 years of Boyzone. Um, so I think you know it, it'd be mad of us not to you know to to, to show some respect to that. Um, you know, that's quarter of a century. It's a huge amount of time uh, since we started. But also, the, you know, last year we did some shows. We're still here. We're still doing things. We're not necessarily relevant, but we still have, you know, we, we, we you know, we have, you know, nostalgia is a big deal. And, you know, people live their, their youth through our songs. So, you know, I think to Mark, that would be wonderful for all of us. So please, God. And yes, we would, of course, be doing something for Steel. Definitely. You seem very humble about your achievements. If we look at the numbers of songs of which you've sold, I mean, it's remarkable. You do know that you've brought incredible happiness to many people and you've defined the teenage years of many girls' lives. I mean, you, you shouldn't put yourself down over that. Whether you're no, relevant or not now is neither no, here nor there. No, I don't. I mean, I don't. Uh, you know, I just I think people need to be real about, you know, uh, you know your place and and where you are and what you do and what you've done and and I think that's very important for for my psyche as much as anything else you know because you can battle you can try and battle with the Biebers and and the Ed Sheerans and you know and get frustrated and and get an, you know but but you you shouldn't you should be what I am is I'm grateful for what I've achieved and where I am and to still be here today and still sell records and still be able to do shows and sell the shows that's that's incredible for me and I, and I don't take that for granted I keep my feet in the ground and, and you know, yes, you get fr frustrated when certain things don't go your way, but to you know, to try and compete with those, you you won't. You know, you have to allow them their time. I had my my time at the very very top, um, and it was amazing. But that can't last forever. It's not healthy. So you know, what is healthy is to be a realist and to understand where you are and your place. And I actually am very happy, very comfortable, very happy, and you know, in in a place where I've never been more. Um, content with, with, you know, myself as an artist, which for me is everything I've wanted. So I think I'm doing okay. I wonder if that contentment comes out of private happiness. I mean, you've just signed to go and do another show down under, um, yeah. but ultimately the home is where the heart lies and where your happiness is going to be born. Um, congratulations, Thank you. the children, the wife. It's going pretty well, isn't it? Life is great. I'm good. Yeah, bought a new home um, in the country. And the kids are great. They're growing up fast, 17, 15 and 10. Storm and I are, you know, working hard um, to create a future together. But, you know, we're doing it and we're doing it with, you know, with absolute pure happiness. Um, but it's a, it's hard work. Everyone's got to graft and that's that's a good thing too. Um, I believe in, in hard work. And then, yeah, we get the, the wonderful chance to go back to Storm's um, hometown and, and be down there in Australia, see the family, but also work down there. It's, it's you know, it's great. It's really great at the moment. And again, you must pinch yourself. I mean, you're living the dream. You've found private happiness. You've got professional success. You're still in work. You're still doing it. Mm. Very few can say that. And I think that is testimony to your core talent, which is your voice. Congratulations. Ronan Keating's new Thank album, you, Time of My Life, is out now. And you're back on the road later in the year. I really um, appreciate talking to you. You're one of our greatest talents. And that's the reason you booked on all of these shows. Ronan, thank you for your time. Thank you, Alex. I really appreciate it. Thanks, man.